She came three times in the following week. Nadia, Russian for hope. I am studying art, she said. Art, a statement, not a question. You know what art is, John? John Costello smiled with certainty. So I am studying art, and one day I'll go to New York, the Metropolitan perhaps, and I will. Costello's mind drifted, away to the sidewalk, the street beyond. It was raining. Do you have an umbrella, he asked, a question out of left field with a curve in its tail. She stopped mid-sentence, looked at him as if the only acceptable response was a headlock. An umbrella. <coughs> he glanced towards the window. Rain, he said matter-of-factly. She turned and looked. Rain, she echoed. No, I don't have an umbrella. I do, John said. Well, that's good for you then, isn't it? Hmm. I'll get it. You can bring it back whenever you like. She smiled. Warmth. A real sense of something. Thank you, she said. And for a moment looked embarrassed. That's very thoughtful of you, John. Thoughtful, he said. Yes, I suppose it is. He crossed from the counter to the window after she'd left the diner. He watched her hopscotch between puddles towards the corner. A sudden gust caught the umbrella. Her skirt, her hair, looked as if she'd blow away. And then she was gone. Now he lives in New York. He writes everything down, prints in blocks. He used to write down sentences, but these days he abbreviates. He still keeps a diary, more a ledger, a journal if you like. He has filled many of them. If he has no event to describe, he conveys the feelings of the day in a single word. Exigent, palpable, manipulation. Something he likes, he learns all about it. Often he <coughs> learns things by heart. Subway stations, Eastern, Franklin, Nostrand, Kingston, Utica, Sutter, Saratoga, Rockaway, Junius. The stations on the 7th Avenue Express, all the way through Gunhill to Flatbush. Why? No reason. He just finds comfort in it. Mondays he eats Italian, Tuesdays French, Wednesdays he has hot dogs with ketchup and German mustard. Thursdays he leaves open to chance. Fridays he eats Persian, Gamer and Gourmet and Bar, a small restaurant on the corner near Penn Plaza in the Gum district where he lives. It is called Persepolis. Weekends he eats Chinese or Thai, and if inspired, he makes tuna casserole. Lunch he takes in the same place every day, a block and a half from the newspaper where he works. Routines, always routines. And he counts things, stop signs, traffic lights, stores with awnings, stores without, blue cars, red cars, station wagons, disabled people, safety in numbers. He invents names for people, sugar face, pale Socrates, perfect silent child, deep fear hopeless, drug mad frightened, made up names, names that suit them, suit the way they appear to be. He's not crazy, he knows this for a fact. He just has a way of dealing with things, that's all. Doesn't harm anyone, and no one would know. Because on the face of it, he looks like everyone else. Same as the devil. John Costello and Harvey McGowan ate lunch together for the first time on Saturday, October the 6th, 1984. They ate corned beef on rye with mustard and green pickles, and they shared a tomato the size of a fist. Scarlet, a blood red thing, sweet and juicy. They ate together, and she told him something that made him laugh. The following day, he took her to the movies, Places in the Heart. John Malkovich, Sally Field, won two Oscars, Best Actress and Screenplay. John Costello did not kiss Nadia McGowan, nor did he try, though he did hold her hand for the last half hour. Later, after everything, he would remember that evening. He walked her home to a house on the corner of Machen and Wintergreen. Her father waited for her on the doorstep, and he shook John Costello's hand and said, I know your father, from the soda room. And he looked at John closely, as if to ascertain intentions from appearance alone. Nadia McGowan watched John Costello from her bedroom window as she took off her sweater. John Costello, she thought, is quiet and sensitive, but beneath that he is strong and intelligent and he listens and there is something about him I can love. I hope he asks me out again. He did, the following day, a date fixed for the subsequent Saturday. They saw the same movie, but this time they paid attention to one another and not to the screen. They fell into a rhythm, as if this was somehow familiar territory. It was not, but it didn't matter. The discovery was as much a part of the journey as the destination, perhaps more than half. She stood ahead of him and she held out her arms to close around him, but he smiled and moved to the right, and he stood beside her so she could rest her head against his shoulder. And then they found the rhythm, and though it seemed to last no time at all, it didn't matter. They did it again later, and it lasted so much longer, and then they slept while her parents stayed overnight in Long Island City and were none the wiser. John Costello woke in the early hours of the morning. He woke Nadia McGowan just so they could talk, just so they could appreciate the time they had together. She told him she wanted to sleep, and he let her. Had she known, she would be dead before the month was out. If she had known, she perhaps would have stayed awake. He remembers so many things, 
which he is sure is the only way <coughs> he keeps his job. He is an index, he is an encyclopedia, he is a dictionary, he is a map of the human heart and what can be done to punish it. He was 16 when she died. She was his first love, the only one he really, really loved. He convinced himself of that, and it didn't take much effort. He has been through everything a thousand times and he knows it was not his fault. It happened on the same bench, the one at the end of Carlisle Street near the park. He could go right back there now in his mind or in person and he could feel something, or he could feel nothing at all. It changed him. Of course it did. It made him curious about the nature of things and why things happen, why people love and hate and kill and lie and hurt and bleed, and why they betray one another, and why they steal one another's husbands and wives and children. And the world had changed. When he was a kid, it was like this. A child's trike on the corner of the street. Mom must have called the kid for supper. A passerby would pick it up, set to the edge of the sidewalk for later collection, so that no one would fall over it and hurt themselves. A simple, nostalgic smile, a memory of her own child, perhaps, never a second thought. And now, the first thought would be abduction. The child snatched inside a single heartbeat, bundled wholesale into the trunk of the car. The trike was all that would remain of them. The child would be found in three weeks' time, beaten, abused, strangled. The neighborhood had changed. The world had changed. John Costello believed that they would have wanted changed it. After the death of Nadia McGowan, the community fell apart. Her death seemed to mark the end of all they held important. People no longer brought their children to the Connemara. They stayed home. His father watched it come to pieces, and though he tried to reach John, it didn't work. Perhaps his mother would have found him, hiding within whatever world he had created for himself. But she was gone, gone for good, like Nadia, which was Russian for hope. Thank you.